morning so I'm here inside the ocean gypsy today and uh, when I bought the boat it uh, came with a Wallace 85 uh, stove slash heater uh, which you can see over here um, it's pretty excited to check it out because you know you got your stove keep your stuff on and then when you close it it actually turns into a heater pretty convenient in the winter time and it is almost October and it's gonna start getting cold soon and I want to try to get this thing running um, so I try to go and I try to start it up set the dials down here push the button and it started to to turn on but then this would just blink you know blink 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 and then one time I actually got it to get on uh, it actually turned on fine it started to heat up well um, and then uh, when I turned it off or I tried to turn it off I you know I pushed the off button Wait for the system to shut down by itself, and it, uh, I don't know, I saw some red light down here, and it seemed like maybe like some, uh, like the fire was still going, and then the red light blinked down here again, and it wouldn't turn on ever again, um, so I, uh, went down to Scan Marine, down the, uh, down the street, and a gentleman said that he would help me out as far as to, um, he would, if I took it out, he would help me troubleshoot it. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna try to take it out and uh, go over some of the steps. All right. So if we look down here on the bottom, and I get my flashlight, you can see there's a couple places where you actually gotta unplug first. So right in here is the power cord. This right here, the black and red. We're going to have to unplug that first. Then we're going to have to unplug the computer, which is this green slot right here. And then finally, um, we'll unplug this as well, the exhaust exhaust pipe. And I'm debating on whether I should take this off or not, or if I should take the whole canister in one piece. This is the gas tank for it. So, let's see as we go along. We'll do this last, and then we'll go and then we'll decide afterwards. Very important, make sure the breaker's off. For mine, the breaker is the blower breaker, which is attached to it. So if it is off, um, I'll probably disconnect the other ones as well, just to be safe. But the blower is the main one that provides power to it, so you can check it if you want. power. Good to go. Zero. So, it's time to take off the fuel pump, and, uh, or at least the fuel pump tube, which is right here. Um, I don't have a wrench, I left, half my tools are in storage, so this probably isn't the best tool to use because it'll strip it, but let's see how it goes. Oh. 
myself a glass jar right here to try and catch it as it falls in. Put that in there. Definitely don't want fuel leaking on the boat. The line looks, looks pretty dry. Now for the top portion, it's actually pretty simple. It's just uh, these four screws. And, um, I'm going to trust the drill for that. She lift up. There we go. Completely pulled out. Time to take it to a uh, scan ring and see what they say. All right, so I just got the camera. I'm sorry, I just got the stove back and uh, took it to Scan Marine. The gentleman inspected it and uh, he says there's nothing wrong with it. And that I was wrong about the model as well. Apparently it's a Wallace 95D. Even though it says Wallace 25 I have no idea. But he says it's a Wallace 95D, older model. Apparently it's a uh, almost 17 years old or was yeah so it's a pretty old model he says he checked it everything checked out fine it worked for him and it didn't cause any issues like I was saying it did maybe um, it was probably just user error there's a lot of other things that he says that it could have been um, one is my tank it could be the the, the fuel that's in the you know the diesel tank uh, could be really old. Maybe I should try changing it out. That's a good, good idea. Uh, the other thing is right here on the fuel pump. Um, when I took it off, uh, I took it off with a Gerber, which he says shouldn't have been able to happen. It, it should be really really tight uh, because this is actually you know use a suction to pull in the fuel. And if air gets in, then the computer is going to think something's wrong, it's going to shut down. So that's another thing that we're going to make sure that this is uh, really tight when we put it back together and uh, see if it works. Uh, he did say that um, when he was checking the exhaust that there's a lot of soot in there, which um, shouldn't be as much as it was, he says. So could be, could, uh, could be about with the diesel. Um, so let's put it back together and um, check it out again, retest it. So, back the way it was, flip it up.
like with every anything in this screen room, you don't want to screw everything down or at least one screw down one tight. You want to put them all in first. So that way the holes line up. And then and then go ahead and tighten it down. All right, everything's back. We got the exhaust on. We got the computer plug in there. He says the biggest thing about this is it's an older model, and because it's an older model, if this computer um, circuit board does go down, that they they don't even make it anymore. So um, might as well just buy a new whole new stove. Um, but he did say that the glow plug and some of the other things were changed out, you know, or were changed out, so it has been maintenance recently. Um, so let's just see how long this, uh, computer board lasts and, um, go from there. I'm go I am going to go change out the, the fuel before I put it back together, put it back in there, so, um, I need to check out what kind of fuel this is, because it's got a pink glow to it. I think it might be some kind of farm fuel with a, a special dye in it and then uh, I'm going I'm basically just gonna empty it out put a regular diesel fuel from the gas station into it and then we'll try and see if that works out better all right keep you informed so for some reason my camera decided not to record the audio at this point and I'm gonna have to narrate what exactly what I did I actually did create another video before this one where I connected the new fuel onto the stove with the, with the fuel line but I didn't prime the fuel line and what I found is that the pump would actually try to suck it in but the, since the fuel line was so long it would only move slowly and wasn't it wasn't getting to the stove fast enough and the stove actually shut down on me and had to go through a shutdown cycle so I had to wait for that whole process to go through waited for it to shut down and then now I'm starting up again where this time I'm removing the fuel line and you'll see that right now I'm actually going to pull the fuel line out and I'm sucking on the fuel line to pull the fuel through it so it's completely full. I uh, don't recommend doing it. It's not the safest thing to do, but it's something that I had to do at the moment. I'm now connecting it back on there. Um, making sure, that, and I did this only to make sure that the fuel line was filled. So that way when the stove turned on, it would automatically have fuel going straight to it. Uh, and then another thing, make sure that the fuel line is on there tight. So that way there's no air getting into it and the stove won't shut down. Now to test it out, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. It's really hard to see at this point, but there's, two, there's uh, a, a, not a dial on the right hand side as well as a button. And the gentleman at Scan Marine told me to the best way to turn it on is to put the dial all the way to six or the highest level, and then push the button on. And you could see, you could see that the light turned on and it's going through its startup system. Um, it's really hard to see, but on the line, the, actually, the fuel is actually moving through it. Since it is a new fuel, it's no longer dyed pink. Uh, it looks clear going through the line, but the, the fuel line is primed. Now I just have to wait and see if it turns on. And it did. 
it actually did turn on and it worked out pretty well. It just takes a while. It takes a long while. So I've actually used this heater stove a couple times ever since I made this video. And uh, I found that it works really well after it started up. It takes about 10 minutes to start up and about 15 minutes to shut down. So it is kind of long. And if you're trying to leave in a hurry, it's not the greatest thing. Um, but it, when it is when it is running, it is works really well and it keeps my little boat warm. Um, I haven't had much problems with it ever since. I did everything to it and everything's been working great. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it and learning all about this Wallace 95. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel as well as you can follow along with me at polywog underscore sailing where you can check out some of the daily videos and images that I post as I learn all about the ocean gypsy. Until next time.